Annabelle Denham, good afternoon. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. It's all going on here, mate. Um, can I just... There's loads I want to throw at you. Uh, I mean, Sir Philip Davis, who is a friend of mine, actually, is the latest Tory. He's put eight grand on himself, Annabelle, to lose his seat, Shipley, in Yorkshire. He's married, of course, to Esther McVeigh. He's been a backbench Tory and somewhat of a thorn in Boris Johnson's side for quite a while. He sees no problem with this. This is on the back of ten Tories who knew about the election date and the back of a, a Labour would-be candidate who, who was a donator to the party who's also bet on himself. What do you make of this? Because to me, it's just tawdry and it just does, again, to me, convince the, the, the cynics and the people who are apathetic about politics that they're right and they're just going to switch off in their droves. I think that's right. You know, public trust in politics has plummeted to all time lows and this betting scandal of which the Philip Davies development is part is not helping with that. Has he done anything legally wrong? It certainly doesn't look like it, um, but it nonetheless leaves an unpleasant taste in people's mouths. I feel that given this is a marginal seat, that it's it's disloyal to the Conservative Party. It's kicking them whilst they're down, whilst they're 20 points behind in the polls in order to what, try and make a quick buck. Um, and I do wonder whether, having been out knocking on doors, meeting constituents, he would have some sort of advantage there. He would be able to gauge better than perhaps the average member of the public how he might fare in that marginal constituency. And there is also the argument that surely he could torpedo his own campaign were he very compelled to try... Or, or does it just say that it's not about money, it's just a Tory <laughs> candidate who's so fed up with the shambles of this campaign and everything that's come with it that he's thrown the towel in? I mean, I, I, I would love your view and the Telegraph's view. Is it a done deal, this election? Because every poll will say that dreary Starmer, the Ming Vars specialist, is going to waltz into Downing Street next Thursday without doing anything other than what he did last night, I thought, on the BBC and last uh, earlier in the week on Never Mind the Ballads, by just blinking and saying absolutely nothing, Annabelle. What's extraordinary is that Keir Starmer is going to win this general election with around 38, 39% of the vote if polls are to be believed. And he's going to do so possibly with a super majority, maybe with over 500 seats with the Tory party being decimated, possibly down into the double digits uh, figures of seats. Don't and surrender the country, said Rishi last night. You know, a fired up Rishi Sunak. He was a fired up Rishi Sunak. I think many Conservative members of Parliament, ministers, staff, campaigners will be wondering where this Rishi Sunak was Precisely. five years ago. And perhaps the election could have unfolded slightly, the campaign could have unfolded slightly differently had he rolled up his sleeves and come out fighting before. But no, it seems as though the worse the predicament for the Conservative Party, the better the performance from Rishi Sunak. And look, he's right in a way, because as you say, what has Keir Starmer done to encourage people to vote for Labour? Very little indeed. There is a sense that people are surrendering to this, that they're resigning to this, that they're just waving the white flag, that they dislike Labour, or at least they haven't really got a reason to vote for them, but they dislike the Conservative Party more. They are so disappointed with what they have failed I, to I think. I think people also, Annabelle, have had enough. I think people are bored. I think people are like... I, I think people almost assume it's done. I've said it for weeks. I think the Tory party... The British public aren't listening to them, but it is interesting. What would have happened if Sunak had come out on the front foot and been a little bit more in his face? Can I just ask you two other things very quickly? Um, you might have seen the story about David Tennant saying that Kemi Badenoch shouldn't exist and just go away and shut up. And I would like to ask you, as a woman who works in, you know, in the workplace, right, if I said that to you in the office, you would be offended, I would be censored. How can loveys get away with it? And then Dawn Butler wades in today. I, I think that Kemi Badenoch, I've said it already, who will be quite grateful, I think, that for, the, for the publicity, because I think it'll put her in the spotlight, and I probably think she wants to run the Tory party, but she is everything they hate, the loveys. She's a woman who sticks up for women, and she's black. Uh, everything they hate, right? Kerry Bayeroff is no stranger to these sorts of snide remarks, vicious remarks that have been made against her because she has been out front and centre and she's been holding the line for the Conservative Party for common sense in the culture wars. Look, the remarks by David Tennant were completely inexcusable in slamming the Equalities Minister for daring to raise very reasonable questions about trans ideology and the effect that it is having on women's sex-based rights. The Equalities Minister is correct 
expect to want to change the Equality Act in order that it says biological sex instead of sex so that women's safe spaces can be protected. This is a very important issue and it's one which is very uncomfortable for the Labour Party. Perhaps that's what is behind Dawn Butler's intervention. But, but my, my point is, I want to ask you this, Dawn Butler who's a black candidate, I'm, I'm making this point, right, is able to come out and agree with David Tennant, who basically was sexist and misogynistic and quite aggressive to Kemi Bednock, and Starmer, the dreary man, says, I'm not going to criticise her comments, we should have a respectful debate. If somebody on the right of reform or the Tory party or on the right of the Liberal Democrats had dared to talk about anybody in this way, they would have been slaughtered, which smacks of what's wrong with our country, because it's one way. It feels uh, enormously um, hypocritical, that's right. And how Starmer responds will be very telling of how he's going to govern when mm. he's our prime minister. As you say, thus far, what, we, what have we had? Just some platitudes about respect and robust discussion. And once again, Jeremy, it is Rosie Duffield, the Labour MP, yeah. who has been hounded by her party for her position. Um, uh, you know, someone Good woman, met her, people. met her with peers, good woman. Good MP. She, she's, you know, exactly. And she is the one who is being left to make these arguments, you know, in order to ensure that women do feel as though... A woman are. protecting a woman's rights. J.K. Rowling, Rosie Duffield, Kemi Badnock, they get slaughtered. Annabelle, I really appreciate you being on. It's going to be an interesting seven days. We're, we're all gearing for it. Thank you to you. Thank you to The Telegraph. 27 minutes to five o'clock. Uh, Jez, talk. Uh, I'm feeling annoyed that my poster vote has not arrived yet and I go on holiday on Saturday. Does nothing happen easily in this bloody country so much for a democratic right to vote? Maybe you shouldn't go on holiday. Maybe you should stay around what you're talking about hello to louise jez i'm sorry but you and jack are wrong reformers storming it on twitter without even paying the huge sums of other parties you know you guys need to look on youtube love you jez says louise love you too lou uh, hi jez those employed and funded by the taxpayer to deliver public services i agree with sarah the ra veteran in west sussex should not in any way be able to strike